James, uh, you might deconstruct this question too, but uh, one of the most famous adages in the film business is Goldman's assertion that nobody knows anything. We've talked about that a little bit. But in the 21st century today, you know, uh, in the Netflix model, where they're driving these huge databases, their algorithms, they have almost uh, Snowden access or Google level access Absolutely. to what people are searching for and what they're watching. And um, do you think that's going to give them any advantage when it comes to making hits and picking winners? And uh, now that they're moving into the uh, you know, business of making movies, the Adam Sandler deal they just announced. I'm just curious your opinion on that, you know, this kind of new uh, fangled studio. And, uh, yeah, look, th there is no question that the power shift, and this is why there's that, the future of cinema, does it matter, all that kind of stuff. What's going on is that if you, again, if you think of cinema uh, as, a, as a crossroads for labor, capital, and stuff, between certain emotions and stories, the way in which the money is flowing into that nexus has changed. The river of money, aside from the high net worth individual zone of let's make a good movie and get Oscar, but the, the river of money is flowing to the people with the algorithms. Okay? That's, where, that's where it's at. And so the way in which money then gets through the system back to a starting point that you think of as, oh, financing an individual film is very different. And that's the fear factor. Right? How do you get from people who make money on essentially 24-7 uh, uh, Orwellian surveillance of everything you do? And by, remember, you're sitting in this audience today. Right now, today, by the end of the day, 300 of your data points will have been sold. Somebody will sell something about you to somebody else, 300 times minimum, okay? Axiom, whatever. And essentially, what you do for a living, you create certain kinds of psychographic experiences that pull certain kinds of people into communities that can be linked digitally in you know, vast storms of data. And that becomes information. You're actually not creating movies. You're actually creating the occasion for increased surveillance and data points on eventual audiences that is the actual value of what you do. So the value. Right? Your value proposition has to do with the return on investment of what it costs to create the moment of attention for the largest number of people who group themselves into uh, algorithmically identifiable units of consumption and of distractions that they'll press pay or play or whatever the hell it is or, or re-sign up for this mosh pit of content later on downstream. That's really what's going on. Right? So, uh, to a certain extent, you know, you can, you, you, if you look at this, you know, and I know this is kind of a weird way of putting it, but remember, it, you can think of it this way. Producers don't produce movies. Movies produce a class of people like us who run around and try to grab capital and activity, creativity and labor, organize it for a second, you know, just a second of the, in terms of, you know, the, 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 the long stream, term. The river yeah, of organize it, grab it, skim off what we can of it and then throw it back into that stream where other people are tracking its movements and the movements of everybody who's coming into contact with it and creating patterns that are monetizable. Okay. That's really our job. So to the extent to which these, these disturbances in the field of capital flow with these all new players are happening, and by the way, it's not at all clear yet what the economics right, of a Netflix are or an Amazon or Prime or any of these things. Um, there's a lot of capital moving in. But remember, same thing happened in the 80s with, uh, with the, what was going to end the film business for good. It was the final, the, the final blow that was going to kill movies. The MPAA, Jack Valenti in front of Congress. This is going to kill the studio system. What was it? It was the VHS tape. Remember that one? <laughs> and at that point, hundreds of millions of dollars, if not more, billions, uh, started to flow into a peripheral network of distribution and production that the studios stayed away from at first, if you recall. It was people like Vestron, right. you know. Uh, and, uh, and a lot of these people were throwing so much money in there that really l gave huge lift to in independent film producers at that time. Yeah. Amazing moment, right? Well, the same thing is now happening with the Netflixes and the Amazons and all the other players out there. Talk They're about that lack of transparency, though. It's hard to access what VOD numbers are, what 
screams Absolutely the right. revenues numbers are. And Absolutely. You have no, look, but this is a fundamental political problem uh, as much as it is a business problem. Because how many, uh, I just said your data was sold 300, do, you, do any of you know who sold it to who? You know, everywhere you walk, everything you do, every interaction you have online or with your phone, it's not, not just metadata, it's not just the, N I always love it, it's like, the NSA has my metadata. Yeah, okay, but what about Google? I mean, seriously, people. Um, and they are creating a, a narrative of your life uh, uh, through this. And it's a very powerful narrative because it's not simply tracking you. Like, again, the, the, the way in which the, the business uses this, you know, the, the language that come up with is awesome. You create, even while you're sitting here, you're creating what they call exhaust data, right? Because they know you're sitting here and they actually know the net worth of everybody else who's sitting near you, right? There's an aggregate. They're, they've noticed that a lot of people with a certain kind of purchase profile have sat in one place for a certain amount of time together. Okay? They know this here in New York. This is what's going on while we're sitting here. How can we exploit that as producers? Now you're talking. <laughs> now you're talking. Right? So they're creating narratives. Right? They're creating narratives. But here's the, here's, the, here's the issue, and it's a political one that you refer to, which is that narrative then has a feedback loop. Uh, so the algorithms that predict what you want are also the algorithms that uh, corral your experience of the social universe and political universe you live in into an increasingly tightened sphere because they're the ones who are silently making sure that when you pick up your phone or when you go online, certain things are going to pop up that their algorithms tell you are more likely. It's a predictive business. They're, what they want and what this economics is all about is predictability and triggers. They want, they want triggers for, for uh, purchase, right? They want triggers for, for, for the cash. And you win when you are a better predictor. But how do you become a better predictor? Of course, you tighten the options so that the choices, so-called, are, are narrowed to a place where it's easier to predict your choice. So, oh, I have three options. I'll choose it. C. Well, yeah, that's because you didn't have the other five options, because magically only those three are so that business is really, and that's where the money is, and we're all having to deal with that right now.